In today's video, we're going to talk about everything you need to understand about defense in Madden NFL 21. What's up, guys? My name is Cody, and I want to thank you for taking the time to watch today's video. Now, if you, this is your first time coming to my channel, one of the things I want to let you know is that what we do here is we do Madden 21 tips and tricks that are designed to help you win more games and be improved on both the offensive side of the ball and on the defensive side of the ball. And so... If that is something that interests you, if you want to get better at this game, I want to encourage you to go ahead and click the subscribe button at the bottom right hand corner of your screen because we upload four videos a day that are designed to help you. We upload one at 2 o'clock, one at 4 o'clock, one at 6 o'clock, and one at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. And we also live stream every single night at 10 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. So if you have a Madden question or if you want to come hang out, I'd love to see you on our streams. Okay. What I want to do now, uh, we talked a little bit about alignment in our last video. We talked a little bit about the importance of that, and we talked a little bit about the importance of aligning your defense so that you're in a position of balance, you're in a position of being able to handle a lot of things that the offense is going to throw your way. Okay, what we're going to talk about today is some of the tools that you have in your toolkit, okay, to defend what people are going to do okay to defend what people are going to do and remember the whole goal here there's twofold goal number one we want to make somebody play left-handed we want to try to force somebody to have to do something that they don't really want to do all right we want to force them to play left-handed the second thing that we want to do as a defense is we want to force the offense to work its way up and down the field we don't want to give up the major home run one play touchdown okay what we really want to try to do is force our opponent to have to score um, in the red zone. That's the biggest thing because the red zone is such a difficult place to be able to score in this game. So how do you do that? Well, the biggest way that you can do that is you've got to understand what are the tools that you have at the line of scrimmage that you can use to be able to adjust. Most coverages in this game, ironically, can actually be recreated on the field. You don't necessarily have to, um, and this is why you'll see a lot of pro players, they'll pretty much call the same play the entire game, but it may be completely different from play to play based off how they play it. Really, the idea here is you're calling coverages more so for the stock zones in terms of saving you time in your setups than you're really calling that for you know the fact that you want to actually play a Tampa 2. So let's talk about trips tied in for just a second. One of the number one plays in trip side in is this right here. You're going to see this a lot. You know, you're going to see this. This is the setup right here. This is the power play, right? It's straight out of my New England ebook. If you want to pick up the ebook, it's in the description, right? This is it. This play setup right here, you're going to see a lot. You're going to see a lot of this setup. If it's man coverage, you're going to see them hit that route right there, or they're going to hit the crossing route, depending on how much time they have in the pocket. If it's zone coverage, well, you know, then what you're going to see is because that crossing route is so effective uh, to, to Miller, you're going to see that motion over slant. You got that little flat route to the back. It's going to shoot out there, hold the flat, and then they're going to be able to hit that crossing route right over the top of the coral flat. Right? Very common, very common, very common. And then the next thing they're going to do off of that is they may do something like this right here. You might see something just like this play right here. It's a very common play as well, right? We're just going to have little check down read on the back side, but we're going to run a, basically a crossing route and a post route on this back side. These are common plays from trip side in, right? Uh, they may just run something like this. I mean, this this right here is, uh, is a very simple concept, but it's very effective. I mean, if they run man-to-man, -man, they can hit that tight end because it's, it's unbumpable. It's a route that's going to get open against man-to-man. Uh, -man. So as a defensive player, you have to understand, we're going to go back to alignment for just a second. We're going to talk a little bit about trip side in and understanding what can I do? What are my options, right? What are my options? Well, most of the time, the triangle receiver in the trips tied in, most of the time from my research and watching people run this offense and watching what people do and understanding that, from what I've seen, he is going to be on some type of underneath route he might be on a vertical route but as a general rule for this offense 
he's going to be a player that is really not going to be on a lot of routes that beat man-to-man -man coverage unless they use him in the motion from PA counter go. And most of the time from PA counter go, what they're going to actually do is they're going to motion over Evans and they're going to take this slot receiver and they're going to play him on a little whip route. So they're going to have him on a lot of underneath routes, right? Um, this, this is a very common setup right here because that whip route has a chance to beat man-to-man. -man. You take a look at anything. You take a look at... Um, Let's take a look at X spot, and you see right here. Um, now, this is where this thing gets a little bit, in my opinion, more tough. Is when they can motion this guy across on a post route, and um, and and he's able to beat man to man coverage. It's why a lot of people use the Oakland playbook as opposed to New England for this specific setup, or you can just put slot apprentice on him. Um, either way, but from the power play, you know, really. This guy's on a lot of underneath patterns is what I'm getting at. And he's either going to be on a in-breaking pattern from right to left, or he's going to be on some type of underneath route. So what that tells me as a, as a, as a defensive player is I've got a couple of different options that I could do. Right? i got a couple different options that I can do. One of the options that I could do is I could take my uh, defensive end right here, Smith, or not my defensive end, I'm sorry, uh, Holman and I can man him up on the slot. I can say you're going to play man-to-man -man coverage on this slot. What I want you to do is I want you to watch what happens when I motion the slot across on this post route. So I got man coverage on him with that slot corner. He should play man coverage no matter what because of the baseline. You see he's going to go right at him and he's going to play that. You see he plays that? He's going to play the post route. Right? He's going to take that away. So now you have man coverage on that corner. And because of the fact that it's out of zone coverage, and this is why I actually really like to use zone as a shell as opposed to man as a shell, he doesn't tell him that he's in man coverage on him, meaning he, do he doesn't follow. He, he doesn't follow the receiver across and give the tell that he's in man coverage because of the alignment that we talked about from 425 from four or big nickel over G, right? Because of the alignment that we talked about from this formation right here, this is going to be a little bit challenging for him to understand. Now, let me show you here. This is a slant pattern. A little slant pattern to Chris Goblin. Watch what happens. He comes over. Cross man's all the way around him, and he's going to play it. Now, he may not stop it, but it doesn't look as open as it did. It doesn't look as open as it did. And if he has acrobat, look out. That might be an interception. Okay? So, that's, a, that's an option. From trips tied in, that's one adjustment that you can do that is really going to put some stress on your opponent. Let me show you another example of how this is going to work. Um, so here we're going to, you know, base align twice, get a better alignment, bring players into the box. Uh, and now what we might do is we might go with something like X spot and we might say, okay, well, what we're going to do now is we're going to run a flood concept. That's what we're going to, we're going to run a flood concept because of what you're doing. So we man him up on the side. Maybe we drop this flat right here. And now all of a sudden what you've got, and, and this might get open, but you'll notice he plays. I mean, he's out there. He's at least out there. It's a tighter throw than it was, right? A tighter throw than it was. It was wide open before. So that's one adjustment to trip side in that you can do. Um, and what I want to talk about, you know, at length here is that you could do this all over the foot, all over your field. This is why it's really important that these two guys right here are line are safeties. These two guys cannot be linebackers. Not in Madden 21. These have to be safeties, unless you're in regs and you're using the box. And even then, I still think they should be safeties. Okay? You want safeties on your field because when you have safeties on your field, um, it's going to be much, much, much harder for the um, – or it's going to be much, much, much more smooth for your defense. They're going to jump stuff. Right? They're going to react to balls and zones. They're going to react to man coverage. What you ask them to do, they're going to do. You're going to see that all across the board. But you see there, cross man interception uh, on that motion slant. Okay, so that's something to be aware of and to understand. And you can do this for multiple different routes, but I think it's just really important to understand why would you do it from this side of the field? Well, one of the reasons that you would do it, and one of the things that most people don't realize about big nickel over G, um, because it is a four down lineman set, and it's part of uh, was honestly part of my hesitation to really dive into this a little bit more. Um, I can't do my you, you most people don't drop these guys. 
you can drop this guy right here. This is a linebacker. So he can go play zone coverage, right? I could do something like this, drop a coverage over there, and now, you know, on this backside, I could do all this other stuff. I could I could do whatever it is, you know, whatever it is that I want to do, right? This guy, this guy right here is a, a safety. So he could go, I could play cover two on this right side, and it's not that bad. It's not that bad of a coverage, right? This right here is, is, is kind of a decent base defense against trips. Because if they motion over, nobody's going anywhere. If they don't motion over, you still got pretty disciplined coverage, right? And so what you'll see on this play, you got that little, you see right here. Now, again, this guy's wide open. I understand that, and we'll get to that. But that's how you can stop a lot of the routes that Triangle's going to be on. Now what you got to understand is what are the routes that, um, and, and, and this is, to me, this is like a big, 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 big topic um, that I'm ready to dive into. So um, understanding what your deep zones do, you, you got to understand that, right? So here's a question for you. Let's say, you, again, you're in your base alignment, right? You're in this. You're in this look right here. And what I would do is I would start out in some type of zone. So we're just going to shift to cover three because uh, I just think it's easier uh, to do it out of zone than it is to do it out of man. And what we've said that we're going to try to do is we're going to do something like this right here. This little step right here will save us a ton of energy. Now on the back side, uh, the question that you've got to ask, obviously they could run a corner route. They could also run a flat route. Uh, and unfortunately, they can also run a deep crossing route over the top of it and can be pretty successful doing all those things. But you got to ask yourself, what are the routes, what are the likely routes that um, that Mike Evans is going to be on? Well, he's either going to be on a curl, a slant, or a post. A curl, a slant, or a post. So if he goes on a slant pattern, you're not going to be able to, you know, that that's a good move. Right, I think that's a good move. What are you going to be able to do if he goes on a slant pattern, really? Right, what are, what are you going to be able to do? Now, if he goes on a curl pattern, what are you going to be able to do? Let's say they run curl flat to the left side. Let me just show you this. This is curl flat to the left side. Watch this. You see, you can kind of fit that in. So you got to start asking yourself, okay, so on post route, what stops post routes? Well, as a general rule, middle thirds will stop post routes. Middle thirds will stop post routes. Okay. For the most part, so at least skinny posts, and that's the that's the that's the that's the post route from Trips I did that they could run. So he could be on a skinny post. Really, this this is what um, this is what you would see. You see something like this right here. Um, let me put him on a post. You see that right there, Evans on a post. That's a popular po concept from this. You'd also see something like this, right? Curl flat. That's what this play is, basically. So you have that option. Okay, so you can run a curl, a post. Really, there's nothing else. I mean, uh, other than a motion slant or a streak. So you're going to see a streak, a motion slant. So that's going to go from all the way across. Or you're going to see a post. Now, if you have Hot Route Master, to me, What's really powerful from this is to put him on a skinny post, but to bring him all the way across here so that he goes on the skinny post like this. And now you've got to handle both sides. I think that's actually very powerful. Most people don't do that. So so you have all of these you have all these things that he can do. So what solves this? Well, if he's on a deep route, what's gonna solve him on a streak? What's gonna solve him in man coverage? What's gonna solve him? And so on and so forth, right? So if I go through cover three, right? Here's an idea. Here's a thought. What if we did this as a base coverage? Now you see right here within this formation, within this coverage, you still have a curl flat. So if they run a corner route to circle, you're going to be fine. And I don't think there's very many corner routes to the circle receiver from this. Either he's going to be on a crossing route or a post route most of the time. 
I haven't seen a lot of curls or, or corners unless they put him on there. So now what you'll notice is, and if I, I have the middle third in the back end of this defense with Jackson. Jackson's in the middle third. Now what I might do is I might um, go ahead and put him on an inside quarter just to clean this up a little bit if I wanted to, right? But we're going to put him on an inside third. I think that's going to do the best job. So now on this backside, you got some stuff you can do. Um, you're going to be using this guy, obviously. You want this yellow here. Um, and so really, really what you're, what you're looking at right now is, in my opinion, what you would do is because you have nothing, you know, major going to be threatening you on this right side, I would take that outside uh, or that outside corner on the right and either put him in an outside quarter or I would put him in an outside third or maybe a deep half, right? The slot guy, he's going into a hard flat. And the reason he's going into a hard flat, and you can do that by shading coverage down, right? The reason he's going underneath is because that what we're banking on is this corner on the backside can jump things if we give him enough time, if we give him enough depth. And so he's going to go there. And now your job as the user, you put a lot of stress on your user here, but you've got to take everything in this little window away. Everything's got to go away. And so now, as you can see from this defense that we've just created, if they try to run a, 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 a motion slant, you'll notice they're not going to follow. You notice my guys don't follow. But look, he's still in man coverage. If you watch Mike Evans, watch. That corner's in man coverage on him. He's going to follow across and play that slant. That's a pick. You see what I'm saying? When you don't follow in man coverage, you can kind of confuse him and do some different things. So these are some ideas. This isn't everything, right? And, and, and this isn't even your starting point. But this is just something that I think, um, you know, is, is effective. That's why I say I like to do it out of zone. I like to man these guys up on the outside here. I don't think there's a lot of stuff that can beat man coverage that doesn't involve them motioning across. And so when they go to motion, let's say they do something like this, right? Um, let's say they let's say they put the post route to Evans, right? Fancy did this in the in the tournament, and they motion him across. Watch what's going to happen to Mike Evans here. Now you got a zone in the field. That he, there's no window to throw the ball. There's, there's no window. So you got bracketed man coverage. And you have outside protection. That's some of the things that I'm talking about. All right. So um, that is a little bit about adjustments. Um, we're going to continue to dive deeper into adjustments. But I hope you got something out of this video. If you didn't get anything in this video, let me know what I could do better. Um, this is some trips tied in stuff. This is kind of some base things that you could do against trips tight end that really do adjust well. And the key thing is here, we have our defense set to base align. So we're going to base align twice, which means it's going to trigger another base align, right? And then we know that if it's a man coverage, it's going to flip. So that also gives us different things we can do. I mean, just understanding that. But, but one thing I do want to show you here, this cover three, like I said, when you man Nickerson up, you see he goes into a proper alignment. If I put him in zone, you see he moves, right? Understand that. Um, understand that 100%. And so when you do something, you know, if I do something as simple as, um, like, literally manning everybody up here and then using playing the right side in zone coverage, I actually don't think this is a bad look because if you've got, if you, you've got this slot, slot guy in man coverage, that means that he's going to have to come open in a specific window. And if that window is not there, you know, it's not necessarily be there. We've taken both motion slants away. They can't, they can't come across. Because now, whoever they bring over here on the side, you'll notice he's he's not going to be covered. Right? Take a look. Watch watch Mike Evans. You'll see. Nickerson's still coming in man coverage on him, and he's still playing that motion slant. So because you can do all this and still keep your – your your coverage on the right to me that's a lot of value and so playing man coverage on one side zone coverage on another side doesn't kill you it, it really doesn't when you actually start to think about what are the routes that they can run what are the routes they can run none of the routes they can run are going to beat man on the left side alone 
to beat man, they're going to have to motion across uh, an S post. They're going to have to motion across a post. They're going to have to motion across a slant. They're going to have to motion. And most of the time when they motion across, it's going to be an in-breaking pattern. And so you've got cross-man principles because you base on your defense. So those are some thoughts on how to stop trip side in. I hope this video helped you guys. Um, I think trip side in is one of the toughest offenses to stop this year. Uh, there's a lot people can do from it. This is just the beginning of the iceberg, boys. But these are real-time adjustments, how to really adjust to people uh, in, the, in the field of play. I think this is something that not very many people talk about. Um, I've talked about blitzes on my channel. If you guys need blitzes, just text me. I have videos that I can send you. Um, if you need run defense, we did an over, we did over a hour and a half video on the Ben Nickel over G for our text message members, which is completely free for you to join. Literally, all you have to do to get the video is just shoot me a text. My number is 812-216-3644. So just shoot me a text. Let me know you'd like to receive it, and I can shoot it your way. But if you need setups like that, we have that stuff. What I'm starting to talk about is understanding coverage and understanding coverage through the lens of how do you actually take stuff away from people? How do you actually take stuff away from people? And not letting them just run the same, their their best play on you the entire game. That's what we're trying to do as a defense. We're trying to keep enough deep coverage that we don't give up a one play touchdown. And at the same time, take enough underneath away that we're able to force the opponent to play left-handed. And I think that's what you'll be able to do with some of these principles that we just share with you from trip tight end. So um, that's a little bit about the, the big nickel over G adjustments for trip tight end.